Okay, I will call to order this meeting of the Marin uh, Local Agency Formation Commission uh, this Thursday, February 13th, 2020, here in the Marin Community Energy Building. Uh, Candace, will you please call the roll? Sashi McEntee? Here. Craig K. Murray? Here. Sloan Bailey is absent. Barbara Kohler? Here. Lou Pius? Very good. Did I get it right? Okay. I, I practice all week. Damon Conley? Here. Judy Arnold? Here. Larry Loader? Here. Alternates in the audience? Uh, Todd Moody? Here. And Chris Skelton? Here. The roll has been taken and we have quorum. Great. We have a full house today. Thank you, everybody, for being here. <clears throat> we'll start with uh, agenda review. Uh, does anyone want to? On the agenda. Oh, sorry, Jason. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make mention that there is a represent. There are people here to speak on both the Novato MSR and the um, item number six, which is the reorganization of 70 Knoll Road. We might want to move those to the first two items under public hearing, and then do the other items after that. Moved by Vice Chair Murray, seconded by Commissioner Arnold. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries. <clears throat> so we will now move to public op open time. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the current agenda. All statements that require a response will be referred to staff for reply in writing or will be placed on the commission's agenda for consideration at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to three minutes. Is anyone here who wants to speak on an item not currently on the agenda? Seeing none, I'll close public open time and move to the consent calendar. And I know that uh, um, Larry wanted to uh, make a remark. On yes, this. I just want to thank you. Oh, for can you put your mic on? Oh, is it that? Is it that? Oh, I just wanted to thank you very much for uh, closing the meeting. I think it was in December. And it meant a lot to our family. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> We're happy to do it. Thank you, Larry. Um, okay, any other comments on the, uh, the two items on the consent calendar? Anybody want to pull anything? Any member of the public want to pull anything from the consent calendar? Anyone want to make a motion? Oh, excuse me, I believe Commissioner Caius had a, one change in the minutes. Okay. Uh, he's two. Well, I also have a full now. <laughs> <laughs> My only point was <clears throat> that. <laughs> Sorry, Lou. Good timing, Jason. <laughs> There was a reference in the, um, the minutes of the last meeting where I mentioned pace star and it's reflected in the minutes at pace start. So just so that if there's any follow up later, you got the right company, it is pace star without a final T. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Uh, make a motion to before we write it. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, consent calendar. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kaya, seconded by Commissioner Kohler. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, we'll move into the public hearing items. And um, what, what did you say we wanted to do first? Uh, the Nevada one would be the first one. <clears throat> okay. All right. We'll move into the public hearings for uh, item number four, draft uh, Nevada Area Municipal Service Review. Okay. So Jason Freed, your executive officer, um, in front of you today are two main items around the Nevada MSR. First is an adoption of a resolution accepting the final draft of the MSR and making that just our final MSR for the Novato area. Um, I think we had a much improved document. There were still a couple of issues that are, I would say, outstanding where some people are not in support of what's in the MSR. Um, for full disclosure, they, there is some disagreement over um, what is an island or not an island. I think some of the folks that live up in that area would, be, would prefer not to be called an island. Based on every bit of information and research I've done, trying to follow state government code and best practices used by not just Marin LAFCO, but LAFCOs across the entire state, all the areas that we've identified in there, I do believe to be islands. Um, no one has been able to show me that anything that we are calling an island is less than 50% surrounded by um, Nevada or shares a border with the county line, because um, that's one of the other dis determinations that determines what an island is. Um, so I feel confident about that, but just wanted to make sure that the commission was well aware that there are people in those areas that still do not consider themselves that. 
There is also still some concern around what a planning area is and does and how Novato plans to use it. Um, I've done my best to assure people that Novato will not have the ability to actually do any planning in those areas. It's just they are informed of anything that's going on so that they can make comment on the best example I kind of give of something like that is let's just say a, a big tech company wanted to go to the west side of Marin, or the west side of Novato and they were going to build something just outside Novato's borders and it was going to be huge a lot of traffic was going to be in, involved with it Novato should be well aware of what's going on there because that's going to impact the city streets police services all the other services that Novato provides are eventually going to be impacted by that large development so that's kind of what planning areas are meant for to give Novato the ability to look at what's going on just outside its borders Normally, you would have a sphere of influence that would, would be a planning area. And planning areas and sphere of influence, for our purposes, is kind of going to be a similar thing up in that area. Um, and so that's kind of what we're suggesting Novato do in order to offset the fact that they don't have a sphere of influence. Normally, a sphere of influence, you'd be able to comment on all those things, and it would be well known. But that doesn't exist there. So <coughs> we were looking for another way for Novato to try and figure out how to be more involved in the community and just be able to give comment on stuff. But like I said, they won't be able to do anything with it. Um, so on that note, there are, uh, let me, see, wrong, wrong mouse. Um, let me pull up the work plan for, I think that's this one. So this one is much simpler and easier, uh, what's going to be coming out of this MSR. Uh, it's basically going to be reaffirming the spheres of influence. Um, none of them are going to change with one small exception to Belmar and Keys. We noticed that when we were looking at the maps that Belmarin's key sphere of influence is actually smaller than the district itself. And that shouldn't be occurring unless you're looking to shrink the district. We're not looking to shrink the district. We want the district to stay exactly as it is. So we're going to be coming back with a sphere of influence that will actually um, expand the sphere back to its actual current boundaries so that they are this one in the same rather than having a, a smaller thing. And then, um, so that's really the only change that goes on there. And then CSA 25, which is a district that no longer really exists anymore. Um, it is a district that was that was put in place to help uh, pay off a bond for land that was purchased in the area. That bond has been paid off. The Board of Supervisors acts as a CSA Board of Directors, and they have not met to act in that capacity since all of the bond was paid off. So there's no longer a reason to do it. The State uh, Controller's Office now has a new process in place, started in 2018, um, where if they put you on their list, there is a much quicker, cheaper way to dissolve a district than using the traditional ways under CKH. So. What we, we've already informed them that this is going to be the case. Um, they agree with us that yes, this is a district that should be dissolved and they're gonna put us on their list. So later this year, we should expect to see a letter from them saying dissolve, at which point there's a very quick pace that it goes about doing it, um, but we just have to wait to get officially on that list and they do that list once a year. Um, and then the final thing that, we, that, that I'm putting on our work plan to, to approve for, for doing this is um, island annexation policy. Uh, coming out of this, we had, a, you know, what well, we understood what we meant by island annexation. Uh, the general public was a little confused by our policy and what it meant. So, you know, the policy committee will take a look at updating this, to make it a little bit clearer that we have no desire to do a forced annexation of any islands where the members who live there don't want it. We're not going to do it. Um, so we'll take a look at it, maybe reword it so it's a little bit clearer as to what we're doing. So those are kind of the three things that are coming out of this MSR. I think they're pretty simple. And, I mean, the island one might take a little bit of time to do, but the other two are pretty simple and basic ones to, to deal with. Okay. Any questions from the commission? Vice Chairman? So, Jason, I, I think you addressed it, but the IVA letter indicated there is some concern about um, island annexations and then how they're being traded. And, or the, I think they thought basically it wasn't accurate in terms of the document. Um, so it sounds like we're going uh, really encouraging Nevada with the planning areas and then <coughs> for the review of the uh, island areas, particularly uh, IBA, is that correct? Uh, well, the, and, and there's a representative of IBA here, so I will let him speak to his organization's uh, opinions on this. Uh, my interpretation of it, and if I got it wrong, he will, of course, correct me during public comment on this item, um, is that they don't agree with being called an island at all, that they don't believe that they should be an island. <coughs> State government code isn't very ambiguous about what an island is or isn't. It basically says you're surrounded or partially or uh, substantially surrounded, but it doesn't define what substantially surrounded means. Completely surrounded is easy. We, we know what that is. You're completely circled in. The Vado area has one of those. All the rest of them are substantially surrounded, and there's no definition of substantially surrounded. 
Um, you may remember after, as part of the San Rafael one, we had a discussion about what does substantially surrounded mean, and we looked at, one of, one of the committees actually looked at and potentially was thinking about creating a policy on it and decided not to, but out of the research that we did there, we determined that every LAFCO in the state considers at least 50% to be substantially surrounded, um, and there were a couple of them that had a, high, a little bit higher number. Marin LAFCO decided at that point we weren't going to change we weren't going to give it a number. We wanted to give the most flexibility to the commission to have discussions on these things going forward. Based on what um, and I, based on what the plan West did, they actually looked at particularly Indian Valley in particular because that's the one that's the least surrounded of them all, and still determined it was about seventy percent surrounded. Now they did what's kind of what I refer to as the big box. They just put a box on top of it and said about what percentage of the lines are there. They did not do a you know go along the entire border, measure every little turn and every little nook and cranny that's in there, they just took a big box and said, here's about what it is. So I, I've looked at the map multiple times since then and agree with them that it's probably, that you're looking at at least 70%. So since we're not close to the 50% number, I feel very confident that we can call that an island. But at the end of the day, it is the commission's decision to always do these things. It's not staff's. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? Jason, um, on Belmer, the Belmer and Keys sphere adjustment, do we have any history on why the sphere was smaller? I am not sure. Uh, nothing is in there. I put it to one of potentially two things. Either it was a data entry error in the system and it just didn't get, someone didn't enter it correctly, or over time maps and, and stuff have gotten more technical and more detailed. And so during one of those transitions to a more detailed type system, the line just got adjusted a little bit because it was entered one way here and one way there and it just, the line got pushed differently. I, and the area that's actually needs to be adjusted is all unincorporated area. It's, it's like the open space that's out there. So it's, no one would ever have noticed it without looking at a detailed map these days. Okay, so there are no parcels that are going to be affected by that change? No parcels where anyone lives. I mean, clearly every, everything is a parcel. Well, yeah, it's land, no parcels, no, uh, no... No inhabited parcels are impacted by this. It, yeah, it's all along waterways and like open space area. Okay, um, and then on the uh, island annexation policy, um, I was going to bring up for the East Peninsula study, it does mention in there that Marin Lafco will not pursue annexation of islands without <clears throat> the concurrence of the community, but I think we should probably hold on that kind of sentence until we have this review by the policy okay. community. Okay. Okay. Um, any other? Just one. Yes. Commissioner Coley. Um, so this is really minor. I just uh, was noticing. So since this potentially might be approved tonight, uh, it has the LAFCO on page eight, uh, commission membership, and Matt Brown was a city alternate for most of this, but do you need a footnote showing that there's been a change? We can change, uh, that, that's something we can easily just change in the final document. We'll, we'll make sure, if you approve tonight, just maybe any <coughs> last updates for you know commission seat changes, because unfortunately, that's constantly occurring with this commission lately. So it's, it, it, I think that this is like the sixth different group of commissioners I've had since being here, and I've only been here a year and a half. Oh, well, I would do it as a footnote since okay. Matt was here during okay. most of it. Yeah, yeah. We, we can figure out what, how to make sure it's clear in there. Thank you for catching that. Yeah. Everybody's name is spelled correctly in that one too. Yeah. <laughs> Sloan had got an extra E in the, the other, the next thing. <clears throat> okay. Um, I will now open the public hearing. If, if anyone like would wish to would wish to speak on this item, um, please come to the microphone. Sure. And you have three minutes, please. Okay, I assume it's on. Is it? Sounds like it. All right. Um, my name is Craig Knowlton. I am with the Indian Valley Associates here in Nevada. Or actually, in Nevada, rather. Um, first of all, thank you for the to the commission for um, you know accepting our input on this um, and are educating us as we go along. So thank you, Jason, for all your hard work. I do appreciate it. Um, I feel like we're really fighting the designation because I feel that, in my interpretation of the of the the code, and, and um, you know, Jason is. Try to clarify it with me, but once our area is designated as an island or unincorporated islands, um, this commission must approve an annexation if it comes before the before it. Uh, if, if the city of Nevada decides to annex us, 
the code is, says that you may not disapprove it. I think that's the language. Um, I'd have to look up the, the actual wording, but it's close to that. Share that. Um, and that's why we, the IBA, are digging our heels in because we don't want it to be. We appreciate LAFCO's oversight on any annexation that would occur to our area. Um, the, this commission has removed us from, our, from the Nevada sphere of influence um, a few years ago, and, and we really worked hard to get that done. And it's been beneficial for us to not be under Nevada's thumb. Um, the other aspect is just the, the, the um, definition of whether we are surrounded or substantially surrounded. Obviously, we're not surrounded. Um, and since substantially surrounded is up to interpretation, our interpretation is we're not even substantially surrounded. Um, one of the discussions that Jason and my um, team had was access to our area. We have three roads in, and they all start from within the city into our area. And that was a determination as you are surrounded or substantially surrounded because your only access is by those roads. Um, we feel by that token, we must include Hill Ranch or H Ranch. Um, it's about um, 2,500 acres right behind us that's only accessible from within our neighborhood. <coughs> And it also should include Ebright Ranch, which is 190 acres, only accessible from within our neighborhood. So if that standard is applied to us, we must also apply that standard to the properties right behind us that are not officially part of our neighborhood by the specific plan, but they should be counted either as an unincorporated island because they're only accessible through our neighborhood and therefore through Novato, or we're not substantially surrounded at all and we're 25% or less. Um, thank you. I, I know it's, we're fighting for it, but I, I feel it's a, it's a fight that we need to have. Thank you. Does anyone else want to speak on this item? And I will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Jason, you have yeah, I wanted to clarify one thing. Um, the definition that I use, as I've stated to, to folks in Indian Valley and Black Point and Green Point, there is a definition I personally use. It is not a legal definition that can be used in any way, shape, or form, which is you, your road access. That's one way I always look at it. Can you define something as an island? Is how do people, if I, if I am the county and I need to get a vehicle out to your area, how do I get that vehicle out there, excluding emergency road type situations? Can I get to your area without going through this, a city or town, as the case may be in Marin? And so that's my personal definition. That is not a legal definition that is used in any way, shape, or form. But a lot of the islands that exist in Marin County actually fall within that type of an interpretation of, can I get there without going through the city uh, or a town, in, in this case, the city of Nevada. But that is just my personal definition and not a legal one whatsoever. Um, and then the other thing I will add to this is, as well is, even if Nevada could not bring an annexation to this body without changing the sphere of influence first. Um, and this, while he is correct that there is some language in there that, you, depending on how you wanted to interpret it, could tie LAFCO's hands in quite a bit of way, I would say that there's always a way for LAFCO to say no if it really wants to. Um, but the biggest way that it would say no right now is it's not in the sphere. So you'd have to change the sphere first before you could actually annex that area into the city. So LAFCO does have the ability, even if its hands are tied on, the annexation itself, if you take the interpretation that is being presented by the public, they st you'd still have the ability to say no to a sphere change, at which point Nevada could not annex into the city. Okay. Do you, yes, do you want to comment on the, the two branches also? Yeah, I mean, it, if, if you want, I, what I can do is I actually pulled up a couple of maps. Let's see if I can get the right maps up here. So. I, to be fair, the, the ranches are a new subject for me. I had not heard them before tonight, so I don't know exactly where those ranches are, but this is Indian <laughs> Valley down in here. This is actually open space over here. So when you're, depending on, most of the residential is over in this area. So 
depending on where you want to draw that box I talked about, you could, there's several places you could either start here and go like over in this direction. There is one street that kind of goes up this way and I don't know if it's not on this map, but I could zoom in and probably find that street. Or you take this line and go over to here and say that that's, I mean, like there's a, different, a few different ways. Either which way you look at it, you can tell that this area is substantially surrounded. There's only one way out and it's, when you get up into this area, all this stuff up here, when I set that nooks and crannies stuff, there's a lot of street turns up in this area. Um, and so you, when you start doing the, the physical measuring, it's gonna be higher than 70% um, when you do it. So if you want, I can actually zoom in here and kind of, hopefully it'll pop up. Sometimes the website is a little slow. Um, yeah, so yeah, you see how you have like this street here. So you could take here, cut over this way, cut this way, you know, like there's different ways to do the measuring. Um, and I don't know how you would interpret it, at least for me, I can't find a way to measure it under what we've already measured it at. And I don't know, if you want to point out where those two ranches are, that might help me understand a little bit. Commissioner Arnold, did you want to? So from Upper Wilson, this acts, it gives access to H Ranch, which is all of this. Okay. And then, um, I'm having a hard time quarantining myself, but there's Ebright Ranches, which is right here. Um, that person actually sits on our board as Indian Valley, so we have okay. to... Uh, assume that that's included. Well, I, assuming for us, inclusion is where is the residential area? Where are the okay. city services being provided? So if someone has a large ranch, that wouldn't necessarily be incorporated into our calculations of what oh, an yeah. island is. Sorry, that, uh, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, it's okay. Those are developed parcels. They do have residential on them. Um, just, they do just receive just family, right? Family, yes. Yeah. But they, I, think, they I think we need to. Everybody water. needs to use mics here. Otherwise, we're not going to pick it up the recording. Yeah. You know, what we have to just go ahead, back up. Uh, they do receive um, North Marine Water uh, District services. Uh, most, all of the properties out there, for a majority of them, on on sewer. Or I'm sorry, septic. Um, but they are developed parcel. They are accessed through any mountain. Commissioner Arnold? Yeah. Okay, is it on now? Yeah. When yes. the light's ready. Okay. <laughs> I said earlier. Red light is well known. Um, well, I want to thank Indian Valley. I want to thank Black Point. Um, I did reach out to them after the after the meeting. I sent a mailer to everyone explaining what this was. Said that we would be happy to uh, to talk to anyone. And I think that that uh, the staff has done a good job in in. Uh, I think the fact that you know we just have. We don't have a room full of people it means that they've sort of decided they're going to they're going to go along with this. And certainly, I'm here to look at anything that might happen. But I think it's it's I, I think all the T's have been crossed and the I's dotted. And I, I definitely understand the commission's stance on that. Um, I I just want to strongly voice our dis okay <laughs> disagree. Okay. I understand that I understand the commission's position. Thanks. I think it would be good to, once we get through the next uh, process of, with the island annexation, um, this, might be, this might be a group that might be interested in, in uh, providing some input to that discussion. Yeah, no, I was we already planning, once, once we got this on the agenda for, for a committee hearing, I was going to make sure that they were aware of when the date was and all that stuff. We don't have any of those committee hearings set up yet, so I haven't reached yeah. out to them, but that is yeah, on my we'll plan. Keep, so we'll keep you in the loop on that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Great. Um, so the 630 acres at Indian Valley Association, is, is that also inclusive of the community college, the Indian Valley campus of College Marin out there? No. It's just, just the namesake. We, we do not border that property. We actually border the Indian Valley open space, which is between us and the college. Thank you. All right. Any further deliberation from the commission? Okay. Make a motion. I'll move this. Second. Moved okay. by Commissioner Arnold. For the record, can you state what you're moving, just oh, so yes. it's clear? <laughs> uh, Mala, do you want to state the motion for us? Sure. I think it's approving the work plan resulting from the, work, the report and adopting resolution 20 07, accepting the final draft of the Nevada Region Municipal Service Review. So moved by Commissioner Arnold and seconded by Commissioner Connolly. All right, 
Um, any, uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay. So next, uh, with the amended agenda, what are we on now? The next item is item number six, reorganization of 70 Knoll Road. Okay. Um, so in front of you today is you have um, a reorganization. This is a multi-step reorganization. The, the folks that are, the, the, the applicant is here, so at the appropriate time they'll, they'll be happy to give comment and answer any questions you have on what they're planning to do. But it's our understanding they're planning to build a single family residence on what is technically two parcels. One of them is the parcel they're building on. The other is kind of what to me looks more like a street road type access type thing. Um, and they're two APN, so we are taking both of them. Currently, those two parcels are in Richardson Bay's uh, district. Um, it, is, it has never been developed, so they've never been connected. Based on what they're planning to develop and how they're planning to use the parcel, that parcel also happens to be exactly a bordering Alto's sanitary district. Um, and what they're building better connects to Alto's sewer line, because both of them come very close. Um, but one of them, I guess, goes a little bit more downhill than the other one, so it's easier to connect to the downhill. For those that are sanitary district folks, you probably understand that much better than I do, uh, but it makes sense that, that, that everything rolls downhill. Um, so, we, uh, so they are looking to change out of Richardson Bay into Alto's district. Um, Richardson Bay, I've talked with their staff. They are perfectly fine with doing this. They're like, if it's better for the customer, go ahead and let them switch districts and move over to Alto. Alto has the capacity to do it. Um, so they are willing to accept it. Uh, I know that they've been working very hard with Alto to create the, the physical plan that will actually physically be done, but in the, while we're going through this process. Um, so what we'll be doing today is changing the sphere of influence for Richardson Bay to remove these two parcels, adding those two parcels into uh, Alto's district, and then annexing the district, or annexing those two parcels into the district at the same time. So we're kind of taking three actions with what will be one resolution, one motion occurring at the same time. Um, so that's what my report is. I've looked at everything. Everything seems to be above board. It seems to be the right thing to do. The two districts are in agreement. Uh, no one submitted any comments in opposition to it from any of the uh, interested parties. So from my perspective, there's no reason for us not to support this and it has staff's, staff's recommendation. And then we have something here at the dais that's in a, that just has a couple of changes. Oh yes, to... there were a couple of changes in there. We realized the resolution that got put in the packet uh, was missing a couple of key words in there. So uh, part of it was based on uh, Commissioner Skelton catching one of the errors. So we, uh, we, we you, I now know that he Skelton. reads the resolutions. Um, he caught one of our errors, which we, we left a couple words out. So we wanted to add that in. And we realized that we should also extend the title a little bit to talk about the full reorganization. So in front of you is an amended version. So when you do your approvals tonight, if you can approve the amended version and make sure it's clear that you're approving an amended version, um, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, I will, uh, oh, any questions from the commission? I'll open the public hearing on this item. Hi, my name is uh, Vikram. I'm the owner. Uh, I just wanted to thank the commission uh, for the time and executive director uh, Reed for his patience and uh, time over the last few months. I also want to uh, call out uh, the Marine Life Coast policy being very approachable for a layperson um, at a state reorganization uh, meeting, so I, I, I hope you appreciate that. Um, just to add a little bit of color, uh, I also own easements that go down the, the impacted areas, um, which you know weren't pertinent, but just putting that out there. Um, and I'm in support of uh, Resolution 2008 as it stands now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else want to speak on this public hearing item? Yeah, I'm sorry. One more thing I wanted to add, just so you're aware, because um, I know there's no more public comment in the room, so I'm cutting it off a little short there. Um, we do have a signed agreement from the applicant that they will not oppose any future annexation that occurs that either LAFCO or the town of Tiburon initiates, because this is in Tiburon's sphere of influence. It is not adjacent or even close to Tiburon's current boundaries, so it makes no sense to do the annexation now. But based on our dual annexation policy, we do have a signed agreement from the applicant sitting in front of us. So. You'll notice one of the conditions is that they must agree to sign it. It's already been signed, so we're ready to go whenever if the commission okay. approves. Okay, good. All right, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing then and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Fuller? I'd just like to make a motion. Oh, okay. Is it too soon? No. Anyone else have any other thoughts? Okay. 
So I'd like to make a motion to approve the requested change in the sphere of influence and reorganization as described and approved in the amended resolution that we received tonight, 20-08. Okay. I'll second. Moved by Commissioner Mark. Kohler and seconded by Vice Chair Murray. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You want to move to Bean Valley? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we are back up to item three. So item three is in front of you today. Um, my apologies, it should have been in front of you at the last meeting, but Mala reminded me we had certain public noticing requirements that we missed. Um, so we had to pull it off the agenda and did not do it at the last meeting. Um, so what we are doing today is reaffirming the sphere of influence for all of the MSR areas um, that, or all the areas that were in the MSR, uh, excluding one of them, which is the one that's going to be eventually um, consolidated. Just like we talked about 25 tonight with Novato, there was, I think it's 23 is the one in, um, in, in this area, in the San Rafael area that's gonna be dissolved eventually. And then we're also not touching um, CSA 18. They have, um, they, they were one of those that also approved a big bond and they had a really big district, but there's a zone of benefit that's much smaller that takes care of a local park. Um, and so what we're doing is uh, later this month, actually the CAC for the CSA, enough initials there. Since Sloan's not here, I can use initials again, which is great. Um, so we're going to get that, their meeting and they're gonna be making a motion hopefully at that meeting to consolidate their boundaries to the zone of benefit and then which is pretty clear what that the zone should what the boundaries of the new district should be but then what the sphere of influence is we're also going to have a discussing about there is some discussion potentially of expanding their boundaries at some point so they want to have get a sphere of influence that's a little bit bigger so we'll be having that discussion with them later this month and hopefully at some point this later this year if all that moves forward we will have an application in front of us to change their boundaries. So I didn't want to do a sphere update for them because I know we're going to be coming back to it later this year. So it seemed to make sense to leave CSA, uh, that CSA's S uh, SOI update off of what we're doing today because we know we're coming back to it at a later point. Does that leave us with any vulnerability in that intervening time? I mean, theoretically, we're supposed to do these every five years and it's well past the five year mark. So oh, okay. Okay. other than that, no. <laughs> Um, so what you have in front of you today is the sphere of influence update for the city of San Rafael, Marinwood Community Service District, CSA 6, 9, 13, and 19. Um, and all of those are staying exactly the same. We're not changing a single line on any of them. So clearly no one's interested in, in this item since uh, no one's here tonight. Okay, any questions from the commission? Okay. Be happy to have approval. Okay, well, hang on one second. Is there any public comment on this item? <laughs> Seeing none, I will close public comment. Second. <laughs> All right, moved by Commissioner Connolly, uh, seconded by Commissioner Arnold. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, I just Easy enough. Uh, I did want to um, mention the, uh, my comment to you from earlier today about it would be great if when we do these sphere uh, adjustments, if you could have in the whereas what, this, what the district is, is doing, because it's difficult to kind of, what does CSA 18 do, you know, that you, would be good. You haven't have. memorized all 30 CSAs in the county? <laughs> no, I, you know, we could make a little laminated card and carry it around in my purse. Um, okay, anyway, that would be a great for the future. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're, we're happy to do that. Okay. That's pretty nerdy. So. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever known me to be a nerd? <laughs> um, proud, proud of that. Uh, okay, so then we are moving to Eastern Peninsula, item number five. Sure, so in front of you today is uh, a presentation that I'm going to hand this over to um, Jaron, who is doing his very first MSR, so please be kind to him as he goes through it. <laughs> um, make sure you've got your, make sure you've got your mic on, Jaron. All right. Uh, well, I'm a little disappointed that I apparently didn't say anything controversial enough to rouse any public attendance this evening. Uh, well, I'll try better next time. Um, so one of my main goals for this study was to try to continue the path that Plan West kind of set us on in the last two, um, kind of moving away from 
the 250, 300 page behemoths that we've had in the past and move more towards um, something more succinct um, that's digestible, fairly digestible for the public um, as we move forward. So to try to stay in that lane and continue to um, evolve how we're doing what we do here uh, with our MSRs. Um, this study ended up being really intriguing because of the multiple layers uh, found within some of the service elements that helped form the determinations. Um, and all the staff members from all the agencies that I worked with uh, were incredibly helpful and responsive. Uh, I really appreciate all their time having been um, on the staff level of another agency during an MSR when somebody came calling expecting me to drop everything I was doing and give them information. I can appreciate what they went through for this, so I appreciate all their time. Uh, um, a quick overview of what we'll run through. Uh, we'll look briefly at what the requirements of an MSR are. Um, touch on each of the agencies reviewed and the services they provide. Uh, we'll go through each of the ter determinations that will require attention from both the agencies and the LAFCO staff uh, moving forward. Um, and then finally, we'll take a look at uh, the public comments that we've received, all of one, um, and the timeline to submit further comments before we're ending. Okay, so um, Cortese Knox Hertzberg requires LAFCO to examine following specific seven areas in their MSRs. Uh, growth in population, the study area for this MSR is predominantly built out. Um, it has actually in multiple areas shown a slight decrease in population over the last five years in the estimates. Um, so growth in population isn't gonna be a huge issue for this region. Um, location and characteristics of any disadvantaged unincorporated communities within or contiguous to the sphere of influence. Uh, there were no ducks in this study area, so that made that pretty easy. Um, capacity and infrastructure. Each of the included agencies had a strong showing at their current level of service um, and the ability to sustain current levels in the future. Um, and additionally, each agency displayed strong capital improvement efforts and planning moving forward. Financing, uh, while additional revenue streams should be sought by each agency due to rising costs, each of the agencies did present as fiscally healthy. Uh, additionally, all of the agencies are proactively addressing their pension and OPEB debts. And I did try to make mention of where everybody's standing was with that um, in their agency profiles and how they are progressing with that. But they are, all did seem to be very proactive in trying to work on that. Um, opportunities for shared facilities. There is one possible opportunity that was identified between the town of Tiburon and Tiburon Fire Protection District that we will discuss in just a bit. Uh, government structure and accountability. There were four identified areas that we will discuss in those determinations. And then other matters related to effective or efficient service delivery. Uh, two were identified areas that we will discuss further along. Uh, the MSR is really a tool to assist the Commission's decision-making process in multiple areas such as sphere updates, boundary changes, and annexations and reorganizations. Um, it does appear, just to put it on your radar, that there will be a few small sphere of influence cleanups resulting from this um, that will come before you down the road. Um, they're all pretty inconsequential, just small areas that are outside of where they should be. Here is our wonderful map of all the agency's boundaries uh, within the study. You had, to, you had to resort to colored lines at this point with the there number were, of, yeah, there were quite a few, I noticed yeah. that. Um, so the agencies involved, the town of Tiburon provides police street maintenance and street lighting. Uh, City of Belvedere provides police library road maintenance and construction. Tiburon fire, uh, is fire protection and emergency response. Sanitary District number five is wastewater collection and treatment. Strawberry Recreation District is parks and recreation, open space, and channel maintenance. Uh, CSA 29 is just channel maintenance, and then flood control zone four and 4A is going to be flood abatement. Doesn't Tiburon have a library? So they do. It is physically in Belvedere. Uh, oh, okay. They they okay. technically are a JPA on it together, as well as their recreation service. Okay, so our um, determinations that are going to require further effort from either LAFCO staff, agency staff, or a combination of both moving forward. 
um, opportunity for shared facilities, the Tiburon Fire Protection District ends up being, uh, due to physical proximity, the initial response agency for a majority of the calls to Angel Island. Um, they raised some concerns on their level of ability to provide care on scene because of the equipment that they are able, or rather unable, to pack over there in the boat. Uh, it has become an increasing liability concern for them because of the number of times that they are being called into service there. Um, so staff is recommending uh, that it's an opportunity for them, meaning the town of Tiburon and Tiburon Fire Protection District, to come together on a structure over there to permanently house equipment uh, so that they can have a higher level of service for uh, victim transports anytime they have to move someone off the island which is happening fairly regularly. Uh, for accountability for community service needs, uh, the first one that we identified is uh, with the Strawberry Recreation District. Uh, Strawberry Recreation District oversees the Zone 4 dredging operations. Uh, currently, there is nowhere in government code where dredging is listed as one of the available powers of a recreation district. Hmm. While Strawberry Recreation District has done a great job at this point of handling all the complexity of ensuring their channel gets dredged when necessary, uh, staff's recommendation that a working group be created to explore the creation of a new CSA in order to allow the county to coordinate and administer future Zone 4 dredging efforts. Uh, we did have a preliminary meeting between LAFCO staff, Strawberry Recreation staff, county staff, and the Zone 4 Citizens Advisory Committee members uh, on January 16th just to try to see what all the moving pieces were, and while there are a few, and it would take some work, uh, all parties shared a willingness to explore the possibilities moving forward. Uh, at this time, uh, Tiburon Fire Protection District has a service contract with the City of Belvedere to provide fire protection and emergency medical services and have been doing so for quite some time. Uh, there is no foreseeable plans for the city to create those services in-house. We'll have to turn your mic yes, sometimes your mic turns itself off. Sign from God. Um, <laughs> with no foreseeable plans for the city to create those services in-house, um, a working group should be formed to discuss formal annexation of the City of Belvedere into the jurisdictional boundary of uh, Tiburon Fire Protection District to allow residents of Belvedere the opportunity to vote for representation on the Tiburon Fire Protection District Board. Uh, CSA 29 has the possibility of realizing an overall cost savings in its future dredging efforts by exploring a bidding process that would include the other dredging CSAs around the county. This will allow larger contractors to levy a single bid across multiple smaller projects that they otherwise wouldn't have been willing to bid on simply due to the size of a proposed single project uh, just not being large enough or worth their while. Um, additionally, just to put it on all of your radar, CSA 29 uh, will soon be coming before the commission with an application to remove six parcels from the CSA and to add one. There has There is one single long underwater parcel that they are hoping to remove. They're still working with the landowner on that. Um, and additionally, there are five parcels that have been in the CSA boundary that are actually on the water and therefore have no need to be a part of the CSA. There is another parcel that is on the water and developed um, that isn't in the CSA boundary that they are looking to add because they are actually receiving the service. Um, members of the county staff said they are waiting until after the 2020 dredge to bring that change before the commission, but it is on its way. So just to head up for that. And then the, uh, the kind of the big one, uh, at this time, Angel Island currently carries the designation of a California State Park. Um, it is within the jurisdictional boundary of the town of Tiburon, at least a majority of it, a tiny sliver of it is somehow outside in, in the city of San Francisco. Um, and it's also within the boundary of CSA 31, or Marine Fire Protection. Uh, despite all of this, again, Tiburon Fire Protection District finds itself just out of physical proximity and having the boat to get there, the responding agency for initial response in many, many cases. Um, Angel Island is not, however, within the jurisdictional boundary of Tiburon Fire Protection District. 
uh, between 2007 and 2018, Timber on Fire incurred just over $1.9 million in costs to service Angel Island calls. And despite multiple efforts to recoup these costs from the state, uh, they have been unsuccessful to date. Staff is recommending a working group be formed between all four involved agencies in order to address the long-term planning and possible reorganization to ensure that emergency services are both readily available to Angel Island, uh, which does get a fair amount of traffic, especially in the summer, um, but also to ensure that Tiburon is, Tiburon Fire rather, um, is compensated for their services. And then the, any other matter related to effective or efficient service delivery, uh, the city of Belvedere and the town of Tiburon have some boundary irregularities in the Boardwalk Shopping Center in Corinthian Island areas. Uh, the jurisdictional boundary splits directly between, through the shopping center. Um, so let's say for instance that one of the stores in the shopping center is this room and our boundary is running catty corner here, splitting our shopping center that store is decided how they are going to divvy up their sales tax literally by where the physical location of the cash register is in that store. So if it's on the Belvedere side, Belvedere gets that sales tax. If it happens to be on the Tiburon side, Tiburon gets that sales tax. Um, additionally, it splits, while technically there are no split parcels, they have divided the parcels along the boundary, um, it also splits a uh, apartment complex and a large parking area. Um, staff members from both municipalities were unaware of any recent discussions to adjust the boundaries. Uh, staff recommendation to the town and city renew discussions in an effort to have a more orderly boundary moving forward. And finally, it is staff's recommendation that a working group should be formed between Lafco, County of Marin, and the town of Tiburon to explore solutions to the boundary irregularities along Paradise Drive. There are multiple instances along a stretch of road where the road itself is either included or excluded in the jurisdiction of either the county or the town. Um, and staff's recommendation that effort should be made to clean that up. Uh, public comments received. You should have the only comment received to date in front of you from the uh, Zone 4 Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, the public comment period opened on January 9th and it will close Tuesday, February 25th. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, again, to this point, the only official comment submitted to LAFCO has been from the Zone 4 CAC members. Um, all comments and responses and edits will be tracked in a comment table and that table will be included as part of the final draft uh, submitted for your approval down the road. Was that in the packet? I thought it was. It should have been a handout. Yeah, really right. yeah, yeah, I just have this. So. Yeah. I don't think, does anyone else? I don't have it either. Sure. I don't have it either. Sorry. I thought they were put on the seats. I failed to do my job, I guess. <laughs> I failed to do mine. I don't know where you're supposed to put them on. <laughs> okay, Greg? Uh, Jared, thanks very much. Very detailed, appreciate it. A lot of nuance there. I was looking at um, some of the boundary maps, particularly Tiburon, there's pockets of, uh, obviously this is a lot of submerged water areas, okay. water and, and connection of land areas with water bodies. Uh, and particularly around Paradise Drive, uh, there's pockets of areas that aren't within town of Tiburon's jurisdiction. I know uh, Belvedere has a, a, some small pockets that would seem like it would be within the jurisdiction, but it's just, at least according to the map, it's not. So, um, have you looked at that, or is it something we need to take a look at? I mean, there are, like... Off the top of my head, without looking at the map, I can't speak to the Belvedere pockets that you're looking at, but I know there are multiple island pockets in along the Paradise Drive area outside of the obviously singular long. Um, 6.1 is 
Yeah, so along the stretch of Paradise Drive, um, what you won't see in that smaller map is there are also pockets around that area that should be, should be looked at for um, island issues. Yeah, but I'll add to it, along Paradise Drive, that you have pockets of unincorporated area, which we are well aware of and are, are identified. What's not showing up in this map, but if you wanted to, I could produce you a map that shows Paradise Drive itself and give you like the, the close up. What you have is you have some sections of Paradise Drive as you're driving down it. One side is Marin County, one side is Tiburon, and that occurs in multiple places throughout because there's multiple pockets that occurs in multiple places. In some parts, it, that road is considered Tiburon. In some parts, it's considered um, the county, and there's like no rhyme or reason where, like it was just like no understanding of why the road here was here, and then somewhere else it got changed over, and then later gets changed over again. There's no understanding of why that occurs within the system. And then there's also some pockets where both sides of the road are Tiburon, and we recently created one of those. I will freely admit to that, but I knew this was coming, so I knew we were going to try and fix it later, where you have um, where you have both sides of the road Tiburon, but the road itself is the county's responsibility. Um, and so it, it really creates an unorganized system. It is Paradise Drive is not a cheap road to maintain. It, it runs, there's a lot of watershed and a lot of things that go on with that road, a lot of twists and turns. Um, so Tiburon is very hesitant to want to take on anything because they feel it's going to be a big burden to their budget to have to take on this road. So we need to have a discussion between the county, Tiburon, and LAFCA is happy to facilitate that to find what is a fair and equitable way to deal with this road because how it is dealt right now is not really well organized in any way. So I want to try and figure out if there's a way to better organize the road. And that's why I didn't try and solve that problem with the one application we just got. I was purposely pushing that off because I knew this discussion had to occur for all of Paradise Drive, not just one small section. Great. Uh, so, Jern, um, thank you for the comment about the dredging and a, a recreation district. Highly unusual, and uh, you know, we're, we're here to look at good governance, and if it seems good governance, then, then maybe we look to have some clarity uh, with uh, CKH on the state level. So this is a rent application. Uh, is that something we should be taking a look at to uh, see that we have clarity on that? So if we come across these, um, something that wouldn't seem like this would flow to a particular group that uh, they still have that ability to do that. I'll, I'll field this one for you. Um, what I would say is this. What defines what a rec district is is not part of CKH. It's part of a completely different set of government code, which defines what a rec district. Like there's, as you know, there's millions of different sections of government code, and each one deals with very specific issues. Um, and there is an entire section that deals just with what a rec district is and can do. And that section, from what we read, does not say that you can do it. To be perfectly fair, the letter you have in front of you from the residents of that district will also say it doesn't say you can't do it, and that's why they've been doing it. The one thing I will add to that though is we have never had, that was not something they did from day one of the district. And if they wanted to add dredging into their system, they should have come to LAFCO to activate a latent power. If it's a, I would argue it's not a latent power because it's not a power they can do, but either which way, it's never come to LAFCO and they really should have, if it was something, it should have come to LAFCO to activate. Um, luckily the district has been very good. They've created great firewalls. It's, Zone four is its own, kind of in a lot of ways, its own independent thing that lives within this bigger thing, uh, this bigger rec district. So it's very easy in a lot of ways to split it off because there has been such good firewalls put in place by uh, previous general managers and commissions there. It seems like that'd be a good example of Marin. I don't know other jurisdictions doing dredging is uh, constantly struggling with this. So uh, it's good to see that kind of a lot go level and who's making good Yeah, further questions. Further. I just pointed out that the people in that area are passionate about their dredging and passionate about having things that work and support what their lifestyle is. And any change that gets forced on them by some kind of reinterpretation of regulations is not going to go down well. Just be prepared. They have a system that works. They pay a lot of money to have that system that works. I also happen to know people who live on the water there and who benefit from the dredging. 
And so if you start to get into where we're thinking about, you know, making changes or forcing some changes or restricting what they can do and whatever, you're going to get a lot of resistance and a lot of unhappy people. And they view it as being a situation where nobody else was doing the job that they needed to have done, and they stepped up to do it. And they've been doing it for a lot of years. So there's valid reasons for it. Is, is there, if, if, it's a, if it's a recreation district and it doesn't therefore have that power, is there a way to amend the type of district to allow it to have the latent power? I mean, you could potentially change the type of district that they are. Yeah, I mean, you could create a CSD, at which point they would have the, the power to do it. But you'd have to create a brand new district. It would, it would, it's going to create a lot of work. The simplest way to do it is switch it over to a CSA. Um, the county runs several CSAs already, 29 that were already, you know, was on the, the uh, they already run. And they run several others of, as well. So they have the capacity to do it. And one of the things that LAFCO's responsibility for is when we're doing this stuff is to make sure that the citizens are taken care of, that we're not doing something that causes them to lose a service or do something. I would not be, I will not pr present an application to you, or I technically I have to present an application to you, but I would not be recommending approval of an application that did something that harmed the residents of that area. So we're going to make sure that they are well taken care of through this process. That's why we, we have already started the working group discussions, because I know it's going to be a very sticky subject matter. There's permits that are involved. There's a lot of things that need to occur. And I want to make sure that every single I is dotted, every single T is crossed before we would ever go down the path of actually switching stuff over. So that will be occurring as we go through this process. It's just needing to identify the, the issue. Yeah, you know, if you're in a situation where you've got a dock that is there in the bay and your sailboat is in there and can't get out of the dock because of you know, um, residual mud that's backed up and you're looking to a, a, an entity to take responsibility for do it, that's very important to them and, and very proprietary on their part. Um, Commissioner Kohler, and then uh, I'll turn Commissioner Moody. So, um, okay. There you go. So, just a question. Uh, they do point out in their letter about saying that a district may do all these things and then says, or other related services that improve the community's quality of life. And okay, I know that's open to a lot of discussion, but also, yes, when they started this in, what was it, 1989, they should have come to LAFCO, but just like we see in our jurisdictions when people should have gotten permits and they didn't, we try to find a way to make it right, unless, um, you know, there's something extraordinarily bad about it, it's a public safety issue or something like that. Is there, I mean, I will also say you just have to read the IJ to see what's going on with dredging elsewhere in the county where there's not enough money to do it. Mm -hmm. These people have found a way. Is there ever a way under LAFCO to make this right? Because it is working. They seem to have the money to do it. And they're protecting people's property rights as well as Maybe it's a little more than quality of life. It's a little bit more about public safety because if you get stuck out there, you're really stuck. Yeah. I hear what you're saying to, to address one of the issues about them being properly funded. That's because they want to be properly funded and they tax themselves and they all agree to do it. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't change with the CSA if, if, if things were to move over to a CSA. They would still have, because they would be, the CSA would not be joined with the other CSAs. It would be its own independent CSA. So. The people who are zone four would become CSA, whatever the next number is in, in the, I think it's 32. I don't think there's been a 32 yet. So they become CSA 32. So, so they do exactly the same thing that they were doing before. But it would be a different they, right? It wouldn't be the Strawberry Rec Board. It wouldn't be it Strawberry. Would be the Board it, of Supes. It, it wouldn't be, the Strawberry Rec Board wouldn't be the ones to authorize stuff. It would be the Board of Supervisors acting as the CSA Board. It would be, so like, it's still a subservient group to some other entity that would still be occurring. It's just you're changing who it is and you're setting something that should never have occurred in the first place. From what I understand and talking to a few folks, the history of it was a few members who lived in that area ran for the board, got on the board, and then voted, decided to do this without really talking to anyone else. And so, yes, we, we need to figure out how to correct it. And the question is, what is the correct way to correct it? I, and this is my own personal interpretation, but I kind of get the impression that the current board maybe isn't as interested in maintaining the rights over zone four that they may that they may recognize this isn't their core business. This isn't what they do on a day to day basis. And this thing can survive and function on its own because for the most part, zone four folks take care of themselves there. And so instead of having it be the rec district take care like 
be the ones to oversee it. You then instead put it where it should be on its own because at the end of the day, if something were to occur, the rec district is the end responsibility for it and that's not good for the rec district. And at the same point in time, if something were bad were to happen to the rec district, zone four all of a sudden has its, its problem and you can't as easily disconnect them where if you put a CSA there, they are independent. So if something happens to the rec district, it has zero impact on the CSA. And if something happens to the CSA, it has zero impact on the rec district. And so you're trying to make sure that not only are we protecting the individuals in zone four, but how do we also make sure that the, the rest of the residents of Strawberry Rec District are also protected from anything occurring because of zone four. So you gotta make sure you're looking at it from both, from both sides. Just to- Hey, thank you. To add to that a little bit, I think that they have been uh, incredibly lucky to this point with the CAC members that they have. They have two remaining CAC members. Uh, both have been on the CAC since the very beginning. Uh, they no longer have, meaning Strawberry Rec District, no longer has any board members who are a part of the dredging process. The last one um, peeled away, I want to say two years ago. Uh, so I think a legitimate concern is that this is obviously a service that's important to those people that are there uh, being served by it. But when these two CAC members, one of whom is incredibly detailed and incredibly invested in a former accountant and handles all of their tracking and all of their billing and everything with their paperwork, when those two people finally do peel away, is there the investment for somebody else to step up? And if we transfer this into a CAC, we know that County staff is handling this like clockwork with somebody who is specialized in this area um, each and every time it needs to take place. So, Todd, you've been waiting patiently yeah. over there. Uh, I think most everything's been said so far, but, but there are plenty of examples in the county where dredging has not occurred uh, reliably. For instance, Bahia, right here in the channel. Um, there are a number of places, so you have to, I'd say, step carefully because these people understand that there's plenty of people that can't get out of their their docks right. that it's not going to fly unless you line it up really make it simple for them but it is like i'm a member of a yacht club we do dredging on a routine basis it is very difficult so i agree with you that if the right person isn't there it, it could become very difficult for all those people and you have to fight i don't know how many agencies to get that thing done I have a few other comments, but when the okay. subject comes up. Okay. Um, all right, then I will. Oh, go ahead, uh, Chris. Yeah. <clears throat> I just wanted to offer another alternative suggestion, which is to amend the state law uh, to strictly authorize that, that authority um, for the rec district. I, think, I mean, it's something that's been done in the past, and if the residents feel that passionately about it, which I totally get and, and they, they don't want that to be taken away from them, then find another way to get the authority. Um, That's crazy. <laughs> it, it, well, it, there's, a, there's another example. I mean, it happened just a couple years ago with Thelmer and Keys. They were able to acquire an authority that wasn't expressly authorized to them through the legislative process. It, it does work. I mean, work with your local legislators. It, it can be time consuming. Um, but if these people are as passionate as they, as they sound and they definitely have a, a, a service that they want to continue in a high quality manner, which I very much get. That's another alternative that they could look to. Okay, uh, is there any public comment on this issue? Seeing and I'll close the public comment and uh, bring it back to the Commission for Deliberation. Craig. What, I, I do have some other questions. Oh, oh go ahead, I'm yeah. sorry, Todd. So uh, this is a nitpicky one, but I've never heard, I, I, I've spent 60 years in Tiburon, I never heard of it called Eastern Peninsula. Um, I, you know, if I, I said, what is that, this MSR? That, that was on this, that was the way it was on the study schedule for years and years. I think, you know. Well, no one will recognize any where this amend. MSR yeah. is. Okay. Anyone in Marin will not know where it is. And the other nitpicky is north and south is confusing because it's sort of diagonal. So in some cases, north is east and south is, anyway. You might clean that up a little, little bit. Yeah, not, not a bad idea to make it so that it's recognizable to it, you know. So An I, average you know, uh, person so in there. So it could be Tiburon Peninsula. You know, I don't think the Belvedere people would complain, but anyway. I was gonna, what, yeah, what would you call it if it's not? It's, it's on the map. It's Tiburon Peninsula. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, I, don't, I don't really care. And then uh, let's see. 
Um, you know, the, the cash register issue, um, that's been a battle for not quite a century, but half a century. And it's because Belvedere has no sales, no, there's no business in Belvedere, so they're kind of, they want those free cash registers. So um, good luck. Not, you, good, it's a good thing to do. Uh, thank you very much. Great. So, um, your mic. Just, the light went on. off immediately as I was talking. Yeah. Go ahead, Craig. So, um, again, I, I thank Chris for his comment. I, so, I, I think part of our duty is really to look at uh, alternatives to help uh, each of the areas and put uh, kind of a menu of things forward. So, one of the things I noticed is in Tiburon, there is a, a point of connection with Southern Red Fire and perhaps was struggling with the state and how to service the state and get reimbursements from the state. Um, maybe look at Southern Red Fire too to see how they can uh, help with this kind of um, state property within their jurisdiction and they, they are connected with another fire entity uh, and see if that, that could help solve, solve some issues. Uh, okay, yeah, it, it sounds like on, the, on that particular, uh, the, the zone four issue that we, the commission very clearly is kind of saying that we want to make sure that we don't take something that's working and unnecessarily make it not work. So you know, let's just make sure that we take care uh, in the solutions that we offer that we are not causing a problem versus solving a problem. I think everything else is very clearly we're taking something that's disorderly and making it orderly. So let's just, um, I think you're, you're, you're hearing some clear direction from the commission. Yeah, no, I absolutely hear what the commission's saying. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is we're forming a working group to have the discussions about it. It doesn't mean, just because we have a working group doesn't mean something's going to come out of the working group that's going to come back to the commission. It's very possible that the working group will say, there's no better solution and Lafco, you just have to put your head in the sand on this one and ignore the fact that the rec district's doing something that it maybe shouldn't be doing. And that, if that's what the best solution is, that ends up being what the best solution is. So I'm not going to do anything that's going to do it. I, I do hear what people's concerns are, but I also, you know, Jaron brought up a very good point about you have, you're getting very good service there right now because you have two very active members who have been active since day one. That membership used to be a five member CAC, if I'm not mistaken, and it has now shrunk down to a two. I mean, technically speaking, the CAC doesn't even reach quorum when it meets. So you're having this issue of over time not having anyone there to actually do the work. So we do need to have a discussion about what occurs when these two final people leave is someone else stepping up to take care of it in the same way? And do they have the capacity in the same way? We, we got lucky. You have someone who's very good with books, who's doing it. No guarantee that the person who comes after that person is gonna be just as good with the books. Yeah, as so, a volunteer. Yeah, yeah, as a volunteer. Exactly. Yep. So you really gotta, like, we need to figure out what is the best solution for them, not just now, but in the long run. And if it's staying with Strawberry, then it stays with Strawberry. If it's moving to a CSA, it's moving to a CSA. If, Someone wants to go and create legislation and have that occur, maybe that becomes the option. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of options that are out there, clearly. It's just a matter of figuring out what, what will work both short-term and long-term. Can I just ask one question? Um, it looks like this was created in 1968. These people were there from the beginning, so they might not live that much longer if they've been there 50 years. Well, the... the district was created that long. The zone four was created in the late 80s. So oh, okay. there's a slight difference. That's, that's what I was saying. Like the zone four stuff didn't start occurring until the late 80s. So you still have, a, but you still write. At some point in time, you have a complete turnover of everybody. Okay, but they're not 90. They're not 90 yet, right. no. Yeah. Okay. They've got a few years to go, quite a few years to go before they get to that, to okay. that level. Craig. Um, so uh, Jason, one of the things we look about is kind of sustainability and representation and make sure that these smaller entities that are representing service in these areas uh, do have some sustainability. It sounds like this is a weakness of uh, the, the dredging operation. One of the things we've come across uh, and I think some limitations in state uh, powers is uh, the oversight of mutual water companies. So I, I don't know if there's a direct correlation, but um, Mirror Beach is an example of uh, one where uh, there's uh, what type of teeth the state have of those that are required to report but don't report. So we go through this process, we're reviewing things, and this seriously could uh, affect public health. Uh, is there any mutual water companies within the service area? I wouldn't think so. I didn't see it come up, but just check that. Uh, the, the 
The whole area is covered by uh, MWD. MWD, so. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. And this is an informational item? Yes. Okay. All right, any further comments or questions from the commission? Okay. So uh, that concludes our public. Okay, so so uh, should I have, op I, I opened public comment. I didn't call it a public hearing. Um, was it a public hearing, even though it's information only? No. Yes, it was technically a public hearing. Okay. All right. Public that hearing instead of, of a public comment. Um, Correct. Okay. All right. We'll move on to the business items. Uh, approval of the work plan. So in front of you is a work plan that I created that came out of our workshop from last month. Um, it is, as we always have called this, it's a living work plan. It will change and adapt over time as we need to. So it's not just like we do this once a year and then we put it in a drawer and forget about it. Um, this thing will get updated as we kind of already did earlier today. We, we had the Novato MSR be completed. We put a few items and those items are now showing up on our work plan. Um, so this will continue to grow. When we finish the East Peninsula MSR, you're going to see this list grow even more because Jaren seems to want to put me to work by creating four working groups. Um, so thank you, Jaren, for that. Jaren, by the way, I should have said uh, excellent work on your first MSR. I think everybody's uh, yeah, very impressed with your, yeah. your work. Um, so what's in front of you is the work plan that will help us determine what our budget should look like for the next fiscal year. So this kind of has a few remaining items. A couple of them will actually be crossed off. Like I think I put on there the Novato MSR or the San Rafael S SOI updates will be completed. Uh, were completed today. The Novato MSRs, most of them, uh, SOIs, their, their sphere of influences will be done at the next meeting. Um, so there is, you know, some stuff will get crossed off technically before the fiscal year starts. But wanted just to have all of them all in one document to make it easy to follow what we're working on at any given time. <clears throat> so this is in front of you today. I'm happy to answer any questions. If you think I missed anything, feel free to let me know what I missed. Barbara? I don't think you necessarily missed anything. We talked about this beforehand. But when you're in the process of the Ross Valley MSR, Jaron, I was hoping that you could look at the Ross Valley Fire Department, which is the JPA that includes three cities or towns, and then the Sleepy Hollow Fire District. And I would like you to include in there the possibility of forming one fire district from that JPA um, so there can be a more sustainable source of funding for um, staffing and such, because it's really depending on the city's viability to continue to fund them as we have. And Other that, than the Sleepy Hollow Fire okay. District, which... And that can come up in the countywide fire study. Well, I yeah. thought of that as well, um, but I, I did talk to Jason and Jaron a little bit beforehand, and they suggested Ross Valley, because it really is Ross Valley. It's only uh, three cities and one fire district. It's smaller than the whole MSR, I believe. But um, either way, if we can look at that, that would be great. You yeah, know, uh, that, that is part of what the MSR works to do is actually look at efficiencies. And clearly, one of the questions that we would ask any time that there's a JPA is, do people want to make it, take it from a JPA into a district and what are the, the benefits? Are, and some of what you're asking for is very, needs to be done more in a working group than in an MSR. But what will come out of the MSR is, is likely a recommendation that if there's interest from the four agencies that make up the JPA, that we form a working group to do exactly what we're doing in San Rafael, which is how do we consolidate fire services in the San Rafael area? We would do a, we would we'll have a plate in place to say, here's how we did it there. Now let's look at how we do that in Ross Valley if there's interest. That's one of the things that the MSR will hopefully pull out is what type of level of interest is there amongst the four agencies. Okay, and just one note, uh, Marine Professional Firefighters told me that actually LAFCO recommended the district 30 years ago this area, so I'm sure you have those records and you're happy to look through those yeah. boxes. I don't know how helpful it would be, but. I think things have changed quite a bit in over the 30 years, but it wouldn't hurt to go back and dust off those files and see what's there. <laughs> you can find them. Any other questions or comments on the work plan? Anybody want to make a motion to approve the work plan? I'll make a motion. Okay, moved by Commissioner Kais and seconded by Vice Chair Murray. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Good work, you guys. This is a very nice, uh, good, good specific work plan. I think it uh, shows that we've been doing a lot here. I'm, I'm, 
I'm just really proud of what we've been able to accomplish in the, in the last year-ish um, with, with staff. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, now we're going to move to commending Sloan, and he's not here, unfortunately. Um, so we'll have to commend him in his absence. Yeah, he wanted to apologize for not being able to be here tonight. He has a case that I guess kind of went sideways. As a lawyer, when your cases go sideways, you have nothing else in your life that you can do but deal with your case. And so that's what he's dealing with tonight. He really wishes he could have been here, but unfortunately, he says he'll, he'll say hi to all of you at some point between now and yeah. the future. Yeah. Well, so I'll just go ahead and read. Uh, the resolution of commendation for Sloan Bailey by the Marin Local Agency Formation Commission expressing its gratitude for his service. Whereas Sloan Bailey served the citizens of Marin County from November 2018 to February 2020 as the city member of the Marin Local Agency Formation Commission, and whereas during his service as city member of this commission, Sloan Bailey's dedicated sense of responsibility for the people of Marin County and the mission of the Marin Local Agency Formation Commission contributed greatly to the effectiveness of this commission, and whereas his ability to take the measure of a public issue from competing points of view and sum up central issues with clarity and plain spoken analysis, and whereas a member of this commission, Sloan Bailey, earned the respect of his colleagues, representatives of other public agencies, and the general public due to the keen sense of objectivity, integrity, and humanity with which he discharged his responsibilities, and Whereas his work with the Local Agency Formation Commission has provided the cities of Marin County with excellent representation, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of this commission wish to express its deep appreciation and sincere thanks for Sloan Bailey's service on the Marin Local Agency Formation Commission and lasting contribution to the people of Marin County. So I think we were all, we're all sad to see, to, to lose Sloan, um, but uh, grateful that for what he was able to contribute in his work on the policy committee was a big, enormous help. Anybody want to make a comment? No? We okay. need a motion to approve it. Yep. I'll make, move that. Second. Okay, moved by Commissioner <laughs> Arnold and seconded by Commissioner Connolly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very Thank much. You. Executive Officer Report. Sure. I'll go through these as I normally do very quickly. Um, if you have any questions on any of them, please feel free to stop me. Um, for the budget update, we are still a little bit under budget, which is always something I like to see. I, I believe we're about four or five percent under budget. Um, the one thing that is a little questionable in, in what's what you have in front of you is we are still working out the changeover from the county doing our payroll to ADP. So not all that information that is guesstimates, but our bookkeeper knows how much we got paid prior and so knows kind of how much we got paid after. But some of the benefits line items might be a little bit off because we're still working out that stuff uh, through the system. So there might be some minor changes, but we're pretty much on budget to where we should be. Um, very, <coughs> very happy with that. Um, and so that's good. Um, current pending proposals, I'll, there'll be one proposal I'll call out. You may remember this weird property called 1501 Lucas Valley Road um, that the, their application died due to them not uh, submitting a request for an extension. Um, the parcel owner had become aware of that after our after the deadline occurred. Um, is no longer using the consultant that he had and has resubmitted the application um, and is working with the water district to resolve the, the item that would, that had held this item up for quite some time. Um, the owner is telling me he's very confident that they will get something done quickly, so he resubmitted. Um, the kind of the one question I have on this is, as a commission, would you prefer, and I, I had this question in the staff memo, is would you prefer to have this item come to you because it's ready from LAFCO's perspective to go where we could approve it, put the same condition on it that we put last time and just wait for them and the water district to work it out? Or would you prefer that I delay putting this on the agenda um, until they work things out and then I bring to you a completed item with everyone in agreement on it? I find doing it either way. I just want to know what the commission's desire would be on that. My thoughts are given the history on this, I would wait till they resolve it. Okay. That's my just my well. suggestion. Yeah. That would be my thoughts as well. Okay, so. perfect. Um, so hopefully they'll have it resolved by the next meeting, but if not, we'll just hold off on putting it on the, as an agenda item until I have to. Because um, at some point I do actually have to put it on the agenda. I can, I can find ways to delay it for a little bit. Um, so that's all I have on the current pending proposals. Uh, the, nothing really else new otherwise. Um, update on MSRs. I, you've got updates on three of them already. We talked about the fourth, which is Ross Valley. Now that the... Uh, Eastern Peninsula or whatever, or the Tiburon Peninsula as we're gonna call it in the future. Yeah, well, one, since that's out for public comment, Jaron has already started doing his, his basic research and doing it like pulling all the data and stuff on the Ross Valley while we're waiting for public comment to come in because clearly 
Otherwise, he'd be sitting there twiddling his thumbs. So he's uh, doing a lot of work, getting the next one ready to go, because he's a hard worker. Um, and in committee assignments, you will see uh, in the packet that the, according to LAFCO policy rules, the chair gets to appoint committees each year. Uh, so you have committees in front of you. Um, one of the things that we did is, because there's not really much need or use right now for a tech committee, because that was the one that kind of worked on the website and stuff like that, that that committee is kind of going to go dormant. And I wouldn't be shocked or surprised if the policy committee got, uh, as they're doing other things, if we decided to just delete that committee altogether. I don't think there's really a need for that type of committee on a regular basis. I think that committee works better as an ad hoc as we need to do things. We can create an ad hoc. It actually gives more flexibility to the committee as well on what it could do in the future. So probably that committee will go away. So all of you have been assigned, unfortunately, one commissioner because we only have nine spots and there's 11 of us here. Two commissioners don't get assigned to committees. The chair was kind enough to take herself out of the running for all of them. And unfortunately, Commissioner Skelton, you also got that taken out. Although we'll find things for you to do. Don't worry about it. Um, and then we have a seat that's for Sloan, but that with the recognition that Sloan seat's going to need to be, we're going to need, we're going to get a third city representative, so city town representative. So when that third representative come in, that's kind of right now where we're looking to slot, but things could change when that new person comes on based on who it is. Right. And then Barbara. I was just going to recommend that um, the chair consider uh, Chris Skelton to fill Sloan Bailey's uh, slot until that uh, appointment. Uh, sure. Yeah, the the um, uh, I was trying to keep that one with one one from each of the groups if we could of uh, city city um, district. Yeah. 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 Just uh, is it usual that somebody who's an alternate is on a committee? I see I got assigned, which I'm fine with, but do alternates get on committees? We, we, uh, we, we try to put alternates on committees, um, and uh, Dennis is an alternate, and he, had, uh, he was the chair of the budget committee last time and asked if he could continue in that capacity, so that okay. was what we ended up Great. Yeah. Thank you. This commission, since at least I've been here, has done its best to treat alternates as anyone else. The only time we can't treat you is as when we're physically doing votes, but otherwise, as you'll see, Alternates speak in the regular meeting. We don't. There are some LAFCOs where there is a very distinct difference. Uh, we try and avoid that here, which is something I personally appreciate, because our alternates do have a lot to, to contribute. And there's also the ad hoc. There's an, the ad hoc committee of uh, and I, which was mentioned on yes. the board plan. Yeah, to talk about pension and OPEB. Okay. All right. So uh, you have your committee assignments. You should be aware that. Uh, Probably tomorrow or on Tuesday of next week, since Monday's a holiday, I'll be asking Candace to put out a notice to the budget committee folks, because we do need to get our budget committee up and running. Um, hopefully it'll be an easy one. I've already started doing a little bit of work on the budget. It looks like it's going to be a status quo type thing, so it should be a simple one. But that will be coming up. Um, and we'll also get the policy committee uh, moving pretty quickly, too, because we have a handbook to rewrite on the personnel handbook stuff. So When do we get the new city members when we vote on that? I think that they're planning to do that in a couple months, okay. but I could be I could be off by a month. Okay. Uh, but they, they know about it and they're planning to do it because not only is Sloan seat up because he stepped down is no longer on the council, but our two other seats. Even though I know Commissioner Kohler, you just got a, appointed, your seat naturally comes up and would, would needs to be reappointed already, uh, and so does the chair's seat. So they're actually going to be doing all three seats, all at the same time. They're doing them in April. Okay. So. They have to have the mayor select committee. Yes. It's not all of MCC. And I was told by Rebecca that they're not going to do that. Until okay. Yeah. So a couple months away, March. Yeah. So two months away is when they're, we're do, they're doing it, which is perfect. Okay. Um, okay. And then the last item I have is a possible change to the April meeting date. This is more of a discussion for all of you to have. Please take out your calendars. Uh, as Chair McAtee pointed out to me, that's during spring it's break. Spring, it's spring break. And she wants to go to Florida or something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it'd be great to not have it during spring break. Um, and we have talked about next time we'll look, look ahead on the calendars and make sure we don't schedule a meeting then. But uh, is, uh, are people open to having it either the week before or the week after? I can't do it the week before. Okay. What's the date? What's supposed to be? Uh, it's supposed to be April 9th. So either April 2nd or April 16th. Anybody opposed to April 16th? That's the second um, the, the 16th would be the third Thursday. Well, I, have another, I have my same five meeting that time. I'm alternate anyway, so 
not okay. currently. Correct. What time is your standing? Five minutes. It's at five o'clock, so I could. So you could you could make almost it. do it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. They, uh, board meeting on the sixteenth. What time? Seven o'clock. Yes. Oh shoot. Okay. Sure. Well. But I'm, yeah. uh, you can always pick a non Thursday if you wanted to as well. The following week. The twenty third. Uh, that's MCE. Is the 16th out? So I'm on the MCE board and it's the 27th. And uh, actually, it's the third Thursday, so let me see. It may be the 16th. So you can't do it here for that. The 23rd because it's MCE? No, it's the 16th. Okay, so 16th is out. How about the 23rd? Yeah, they meet at night, so there's. We can't do it on single team okay. that's MCE board meeting. If we have it. We, yeah. We've got several other people know on 16th, so 23rd. 23rd. We have Tam on the 23rd. The, uh, April 23rd? Yes. I'm hearing the county is the Tam meeting on the 23rd. Oh, yeah. The county does have a Tam meeting. It is, it is the fifth week on the 30th. 30th? All right, maybe we need to do a doodle poll here rather than do this on the dais. Um, okay, so but but uh, um, just please be you know watch out for that, and we'll do a doodle poll, and we'll get that sorted out. All right. No, that's the one thing. Okay. So you want us to do a doodle poll to figure it out? Okay. Yeah, I think we I think we'll that's that. what we're gonna have to do. All right. Perfect. That is all I have Good. for these. Oh, uh, one other thing for the executive officers report: don't forget to fill out your form 700s. Um, for those of you that By are April in 1st. other elected offices, as long as there's a spot where you can put other things that you are on, as long as you put us in that other spot, you only have to fill out the form once. If you forget to put us in that other spot, you get to do your form twice. So and you guys don't need a wet signature, right? You can just have a copy no, of it? No, as long as you, if you, if you are part of the system that does it online, and then you put us in there, that's all you have to do. We're good at that point. Um, if you don't do yours online, then yes, we do need a copy of it, I believe. Um, so make sure you get it. And then also, every other year, you have to do AD1234. Um, it's, uh, it's your training of what not to do as a commissioner. Um, it's like your ethics training and stuff like that. Um, so those of you that didn't do it last year, make sure you do it this year. I know Chris and I did it last year with Sashi and Mill Valley because they were nice enough to let us join them. So I'm sure all of you, except for Larry, you are the only one that's not on another body that has to. I'm assuming you have to do it already for your other body. So. It covers you here as well. Just make sure we are aware that you've give done it. Yeah, give us. You have a certificate. Get us a copy of that certificate. So that, that's that's the ethics one. Yeah, that's, that's the, the ethics one. one. And Larry, if you need help finding a spot, we will find you a district in the area, and you can go join them for the Just night. Do it online. Right? You can do it online. Oh yeah, that's right. You can do it online too. Uh -huh. Fantastic. So whichever way you want to do it, you just need to do it because this is your first year. Yeah, you have to do oh, the sexual harassment training too. Isn't that part of 1234? Yeah. No. Uh, it's separate. We just did it in Fairfax and it's every two it's years. Yeah. No, it's not ethics. It's, it's, it's separate sexual harassment. Separate. It's it's a certain amount separate. of employment. Yeah. I don't think we're required to do it okay. as, as lap bill. Yeah. Okay. Any commissioner announcements and requests? No. Nope. All right. Then we will adjourn to. Uh, an April meeting to be determined by doodle poll. Thank you very much.